Hello and welcome back to this tutorial where I'll give you some tips for planning your flight on VATSIM and show you some third party applications for route planning that I find beneficial. Some of these are free and some are excellent payware programs. Being prepared will help you out immensely when flying with a online ATC and can make the experience less daunting. The links to all applications mentioned are listed in the description. A little disclaimer is in order. This tutorial is made with an FMC capable aircraft in mind. FMC stands for Flight Management Computer. None of the stock aircrafts have these, and only some aircrafts do. If you're flying a stock simulator aircraft, you will not be able to do much of what I'm about to show you in this tutorial. I will only touch on subjects relevant for filing a proper flight plan on VATSIM. I will not go into details about the weather and fuel planning, nor filing a flight plan with different en route flight levels and speeds. This is the quick and easy, standard methods of filing a flight plan on VATSIM. It's obviously not for the real world. With that said, let's talk quickly about what a flight plan is and how it differs from region to region. First, you need to differentiate between IFR and VFR flight plans, instrument flight rules and visual flight rules. You can fly both types on VATSIM. If you're unfamiliar with those terms, try to Google them. The point of any flight plan is to tell ATC what you plan on doing while you're up in the air. The flight plan makes a binding contract. The rest of this tutorial will focus on IFR flight planning. What all IFR flight plans have in common is that it always contains your en route segment, the waypoints and airways that you will be flying through. In Europe, the flight plan starts with your first waypoint, which should be the last waypoint of the SID, or standard instrument departure. The last waypoint on your flight plan should be the same as the first waypoint of your STAR, the standard arrival route. In Europe, you never include your SID or STAR into your flight plan. You leave them out. In the US, however, you do include them. In both cases, the en route segment will look identical. Since I live in Europe and mostly fly in our skies, I will base this tutorial on European principles. Here is an example of a flight plan filed by British Airways on their flight from Heathrow to Kennedy International. As you can see, this is a hybrid of both EU and US rules for flight plans. It starts in the EU um, by just adding CPT, or Charlie Papa Tango, which is the last waypoint of the Compton departure for uh, London. It ends with the standard arrival routes for Kennedy International, the Parch 1 which is in accordance with the US system. So, now on to the more practical side of things. How will you know what waypoints and airways to add, and what SIDs and STAR to choose? You need a third-party application for this. You can either use some excellent browser-based route planners, which provide both free and paid services, or use paid client-side applications. Personally, I use Flight Sim Commander 9 to plan my routes, as it gives me both a visual representation of the planned route and I can make changes as I see fit. Here is an example of a free uh, browser based route planner. It also has a paid option. And here's another one. Well, just let me tell you, this is called Route Finder. And as I said, this has a free section you can use. Here you have another example. It's called VRoot. It has two client side uh, uh, clients. One is standard, and the other one is premium. You pay a one time fee of currently uh, 22.95 uh, euros. And then you have Flight Sim Commander, my route planner of choice. And uh, this is upgradable, or this is updatable via the Navigraph uh, NavAge system. In this tutorial, I will plan a route from uh, Oslo Gardermoen 
to uh, Copenhagen Kostrup Airport in Denmark. Let's see how Route Finder and uh, Flight Sim Commander stand up against each other. First, however, I want to point out that there are some weather planning that is needed before we proceed. We need to know which runways to plan for. For that, I find VATSPY a handy tool. Let me just show you here. Here you can see a representation of the traffic and ATC online in Europe at the moment. Let's just update and see if there's been any changes. There aren't any ATC online in the areas I will be flying uh, right now, but I can promise you when uh, I make a tutorial with uh, communicating with ATC, there will be. So we need to check the weather and we click this button. You can enter your des uh, destination and departure airports here and to get the METAR for, for those airports. As you can see, there is a northerly wind at 4 knots at Gardermoen and there is an easterly wind at 13 knots on Kostrup. This is very nice for a 0-1 left departure for uh, Oslo Gardermoen and a 2-2 left at Kostrup. So now we know that the winds, what the winds are and what uh, runways to plan for. Uh, let's go to Route Finder again and check what it tells us. I've entered our departure and arrival and I've uh, entered a minimum flight level and a maximum flight level for our cruise. I wanted to include SIDs and STARS and I've disabled NAT tracks or North Atlantic tracks. That's only needed if you plan to fly across North Atlantic. So let's click Find Routes. And as you can see, it has a problem with the SID uh, of our route. It can't really find the fix of the standard instrument departure routes that it has in store. It starts our route on Skien, an NDB, at a city in Norway. And it ends on SVD, or Sveda, outside uh, Copenhagen. I know for a fact that Sveda is a valid endpoint and a start of a uh, start of a star uh, into um, Kostrup. However, Ski is no longer valid as a departure point. We have had a major overhaul at uh, on our Navate system in southern Norway um, since April, I think, 2011, and this freeware route planner hasn't implemented those changes yet. So if you use this route, you will get some problems with ATC on your departure leg. You can, however, use it, and uh, I'm sure you will get help from our friendly ATC. Just be sure you don't log in when it's fully traffic or plenty of traffic. If you have, uh, if you know that your route is not valid. So let's hop back into Flight Sim Commander. Many people start to uh, fi find their routes by, by um, clicking on this high altitude plan to list their route segment. I find it easier and more efficient to start with the standard instrument departure and arrival routes before I enter the route segment. So we know that we want a 0 -1 left departure. We have these here. We can just uh, show, I will just show you how all the routes are, and uh, as you can see, this point here is the skiing or uh, um, NDB. And it has no connecting instrument departure routes to that point. So this just proves my point. However, I know that the AUXA 2 Alpha departure for runway 0 and left will take me in the direction I want. So it will take us uh, upwind, northbound, then eastward on the crosswind, and southeast on the downwind. I want to add this, and now we'll go down to uh, Copenhagen and do the same thing there on the star. I mentioned that SVD is a valid uh, standard arrival point, 
and as you can see we have uh, SVD here however we want uh, 2 to left arrival so let's just scroll down and I find the Sveda 3 November arrival for runway 2 to left the nice thing about this arrival is it will take us right on to the ILS via the final approach fix uh, you have an alternative, it's the Sueda 1 Charlie arrival. It consists mainly of ATC vectoring. So, 3 November, it will feed our flight managing computer with the nav aid data it needs. So, we add this. Now, we need to add our en route segment and just click high altitude plan. And we see that our en route segment has been filled and I just look over and see that it looks okay uh, you want to avoid having waypoints like that are non-logical and non-efficient that might be quite away a bit from the general direction which you want to be heading if you uh, see that you are getting those uh, non-logical waypoints try to add a low altitude plan instead so now we have a route this completes the lateral route planning and I'll just copy this text up here because I'll add this to our uh, FSM flight plan table in just a little bit. Lastly, I want to, uh, when it comes to route planning, we need to, to know what flight level to go for. In uh, Europe, or most of Europe, and in uh, the US, you will be filing odd flight levels when going east and uh, even flight levels when going west. So this will take me southeast and I will be filing a flight plan of odd flight levels. Since I will be uh, uh, pretty full with uh, passengers and luggage, I will um, file a flight plan around flight level 330. So we have our control panel and uh, we will open the flight plans uh, table and we check that we have our call sign our aircraft is okay this is usually processed automatically for you if it's blank uh, you need to uh, well you need to make sure that it isn't uh, um, then we need to check that this is ticked. We are doing an IFR plan. If you were to do an VFR, you click here. Departure, we are going from uh, Gardermoen and we're going to uh, Copenhagen. And uh, this is already the route, but I'll just paste the text we got from uh, Flight Sim Commander. and we will delete uh, the accounts for the arrival airports, uh, arrival airport and departure, and we need to delete the star, and we need to delete the SID. But we want to keep the last waypoint of the SID active, so I'll just delete two alpha and add the full name of the waypoint, which is Oxat and we have a complete route. We are going for flight level 330 and if you are new it would be wise to add some text explaining that you are new to VATSIM. I've added 1108 because that's uh, my ERAC cycle which I have operational in my FMC through Navigraph. I ended with a uh, slash V. It means that I'm a full voice pilot. I can receive and send voice. If you don't have a microphone but you can hear the ATC, you type R. And if you're full text, you type slash T. There we go. The rest of this table is uh, purely for role playing, uh, except maybe the departure time estimate. Uh, I think Euroscope, which is the ATC uh, client, uh, will acknowledge this time you enter. However, persons on board and fuel, etc., that's purely roleplay. Now we log on before we send 
to tower.